You know, it used to be getting power to your tools was a fairly simple procedure. You had a cord, you made sure it was in good condition. Most likely, you had an extension cord. That was in good condition. You then took that cord, you plugged it into a wall or a generator, and voila, things are rapidly changing. Here's the deal, lithium ion batteries are powering a wide array of tools on the job site, homeowners, DIYers, they're everywhere. But did you know these batteries have a finite life cycle? You could only run the tools, discharge the batteries, recharge them, run the tools so many times. The batteries wear out, then you gotta replace them. And the batteries cost Buku dollars in a lot of instances, unless you're getting a free battery promotion. And if you like free battery, like Bear Tool free battery tool promotions, get subscribed and tap the bell because we always are publishing the best tool deals anywhere on the interwebs. Now here's the thing, you wanna learn how to get the most out of your lithium ion battery packs and prolong their life. It's coming right up after this message from our sponsor, VCG Construction. Head on over to the merch store if you want to help out the channel. You can buy a hat. I don't have a hat today. You can get a t-shirt. I don't have one from our company. Or a hoodie. <laughs> God, I gotta head over to the merch store myself. I'm back. I was showing off the fresh haircut, now I'm showing off the fresh hat. Look at it. The lithium ion batteries or cells that make up these packs that plug on or work with your tools, the cells inside of those are cylindrical in shape. And the process of charge and discharge is rather fascinating how the energy is transferred, the amount of power that can be released within a specific amount of time. That is all dependent upon the size of the cell in the battery. Those cells then make up a battery array which creates the pack. No matter if you're running 18650 cells, 21700 cells, or a different type of cell, these lithium ion cells, they have a discharge and charge life cycle of 300 to 500 cycles. So that means you take one of these packs, you throw it on your tool, you run it until it don't run no mo, then you throw it onto your charger, it's charged. That is a cycle, that is a life cycle. The problem is, is that if you're using these tools to make a living, you're using them day in, day out. Think about it, within a year, this $200 battery, and you're probably using multiple, in a day, you're more than halfway through the life cycle of this battery. How many people do you have on your job site using lithium ion tools? And the larger the tools are becoming, the bigger the batteries become, the more expensive, but the more rapidly you cycle through your batteries. Here's the other interesting fact about these batteries. As you move through the life cycle, the cells within begin to degrade. Your battery will discharge quicker and you will have to recharge it more frequently. Recharging these batteries creates heat in the cells, which degrades them further. So you see how this becomes a spiral down? It just doesn't end until this ends up recycled or worse, possibly in a landfill. By the time the tool manufacturer gets that battery, that cell, into an array, makes a battery pack, puts it on the tool, packages it up, ships it, and it hits your local tool store. The starting capacity of this battery pack and its cells within it is already down to 85 on the low end to 94% of its capacity. So it's already lost 6%. Let's just say we've gone through half of our charges, our life cycles. The battery is only degraded to a 73 to 84% capacity. That's, that's why you might get through those first 250 charges and you think everything's fine, but it's all downhill after those first 250 life cycles because it's going to, it's going to rapidly degrade at the halfway point. Here's the other thing about this. I know you won't believe it because you're too smart, but manufacturers a lot of times they'll overrate their batteries. You might think you're getting one thing, 
but you are probably getting something lesser. So with all that said, and now that you know it, we're gonna give you a few tips. Number one, avoid full discharges of your lithium ion battery packs. A lot of people don't realize that the reason tool manufacturers and tool stores and distributors have clearance deals here and there is because these batteries, if they're not being used or charged, also have a life expectancy. It's like a freshness date on your milk. If you like things like drinking milk, at one point we had Gen 2 combo kits from Milwaukee Tool. They were a $600 or $599 combo kit. The very cool gang was scoring those combo kits at $125. There was an expiration on the five amp hour XC batteries in those combo kits. Instead of the battery pack reading the normal halfway charge on the battery, when you get a within expiration combo kit, a lot of times they were at single bar or flashing single bar. They would try to throw them onto their rapid charger. They would message us, my battery's broke. I can't get it to charge on a rapid charger. And then I would tell them to, why don't you try charging it on a standard charger? And inevitably that would work. All these batteries that have lithium ion cells in them, if they sit on a shelf for too long and don't have a maintenance charge on them, the voltage within the cell will drop so low that you will not be able to charge it. It will be irrevocably damaged and the cell inside will not be able to receive a charge. That means the pack will be broken, defunct, dead forever. And that happens at under around a half a volt. Now there can be some procedures, I suppose, like CPR for batteries that you can perform. But generally, even if you were to somehow kickstart these batteries back into accepting a charge, they're still damaged. And once again, once the battery's damaged, it will discharge faster. That means it will have to be recharged more frequently. Recharging them creates more heat. Creating more heat damages the battery further. And then it's, once again, all downhill from here. So keep a maintenance charge in your battery, which moves us into number two. If you're going to be storing your batteries for an extended period of time, you're going to want to make sure that it is in a cooler, climate controlled, if you can, dry place. I don't think that there's a, you know, a reason to store your tools climate controlled. You can leave them in the truck or the garage, the unheated garage if you want. But if you're going to be storing your batteries for an extended period of time and the possibility is it's going to be in the extreme cold or extreme heat, I would suggest taking those batteries off of your tools and bringing them inside, putting them on a shelf off the floor in the basement of your home. Depending on where the region you live and how many batteries it is and what you're doing, that's going to have to be up to you. But I will say that it has been noted through tests and studies in use that anything below freezing in cold climates will cause damage to these batteries and anything above 86 degrees. So if you're keeping these in your vehicle, in a truck, in the back seat, whatever, and you're seeing temperatures above 86 degrees, and you, we all know the inside of a vehicle gets to 100, 110, 120 degrees, you're causing damage to these batteries. You're not going to necessarily want to store the batteries fully charged either. For the best optimal condition to store your batteries to prolong their life, you're going to want to store them at the halfway. Two bar charge would be perfect. The absolute do not do of all this storage talk is to store fully charged batteries in high temp areas. You never want to discharge a lithium ion cell below 20% of its capacity, optimally. Wouldn't it be great if a tool manufacturer employed into their battery and tool protocol technology software that tells this battery to never discharge below 20%. What if I told you that these four bars weren't telling you the truth? What if when this last bar goes dead empty, 
it still had 20% left in reserve. And what if when it said it was fully charged, it was only at actually 80%. Think about this. You don't have to manage the battery anymore. The technology is built into the tools and the chargers and the batteries. But if your battery tool line doesn't do that for you, try to live by those rules. Never charge your battery beyond 80% and never discharge it below 20. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're gonna get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.